live. Fiends. Yeah. You recording, Fiends. Michael? Yeah, I'm recording. Hey, I know you hate it when I give you tips on the air, but you could actually turn your treble up a little bit. I'd like to hear a little uh, more clarity in my Nema. Okay. That's in my Nemas. Yeah. I was going to say that recently. I think that that's a... Uh, okay. Yeah. How's, how's that? Too trebling? No. No, it's good. You know, someone recently okay. complained on a uh, Anarchy Gumbo podcast. They said, I listened to this in the first minute and a half with you guys sound checking, and I, I'll never listen again, and this is proof why anarchists don't have their crap together. <laughs> and I'm like, no, man, we're a teaching hospital. We want to teach yeah. people how to do this. It's the transparency that your liar-in-chief Obama didn't give you but promised you. I was thinking of calling the episode today. Your president wants to kill you, but I just—that's almost just too he's not, much. Over he's the not top. my president. <laughs> the president wants to kill you. The president yeah. does want to kill you if you own guns because uh, he wants to uh, outlaw them, and uh, you know they don't just go away when they're outlawed. They have to uh, shoot people to get them, which is yeah, what people exactly. are saying is going to happen. He doesn't want to get rid of the guns. He just wants all the guns to himself. What you a know. selfish prick. I yeah, and I don't even like to call him the president. I, I kind of like, I'm not a Quaker, but I really like the bad Quaker, and he doesn't like to call anybody by a title. And I kind of like that, like, especially state titles. Like, that's not fair. You get to be called a judge and act like you're all awesome just because <clears throat> you're a suck up enough to get to that position, or you get to be called president. Uh, that's just stupid. I'm going to call you by your name. I was Barry. talking to Ben Quaker today in his undisclosed location on the road. He and his wife are driving around the country solving mysteries in a van for the retirement. <laughs> and uh, I talked uh, to him. Does his wife wear an orange sweater, have yeah. boobs and glasses? <laughs> yeah. And uh, I talked to him at some campground, and we're designing a button for him to give away at uh, uh, in New Hampshire. And he's going to give our buttons away, too, at the Liberty Fest. Mm, um, nice. But I... The button design I have is just a picture of him, and it says, Bad Quaker, not a great man. Oh, nice, nice. Although, that kind of sounds like you're saying he's not a great man. Well, at first I said, make it say, the Bad Quaker, a great man, and he didn't like it. So, he likes the not a great man. I think we're going to go with that, because it'll make people wonder. It'll be like, wait, what is that? They'll probably think it's yeah. a political slogan by someone's opponent, you know, by the yeah, Bad Quaker's yeah. opponent in some election. Right, collection. that's what it sounds like to me. It sounds like it's anti-Bad Quaker, which would be pro-Good Quaker. I don't Speaking of wow. the state... Um, how about, how about bad Quaker? No oats. Speaking, <laughs> that's funny. Speaking of the state, um, I'm envious of my wife because she got her anarchy registration card in the mail and they didn't send me one. <laughs> she got this thing. Her, me, her anarchy registration. It is. Card? It you're gonna have to enlighten me on that. It literally is. Let me read this to you. It's a big postcard okay. that came from Natrona County Elections Board, and it says, "This notice is being sent to you because you." Because the poll book for your precinct indicates you did not vote in the general election this year. <laughs> if you are still a resident and wish to be registered to vote, return this card, email, or call by February 14th, by Valentine's Day. So basically, if she does nothing, this card, with this card, it removes her from the voter roll. Now, I didn't get wow. one. Here's why. She was registered Republican, and I was registered Libertarian Party. We hadn't voted in like two years, but uh, uh, I, I really think that they're like, well, you're a Republican. Your vote counts, so we'll try to get you to re-register. Mm -hmm. But I'm a, I was a Libertarian Party member last time I voted, so I think they're just like, that's as if you don't vote already. We're not even going to bug you. <laughs> well, didn't you say like on there it says it's a state law? Like that's the state law in Wyoming that if yes. they don't see you in the roll check, they just get rid of your voting registration? Yeah. That seems like it, it, I mean, it's not coercion in a sense, but it seems like that's kind of pressure to participate in the system. Like, you must vote no matter if you hate on the ballot or not, or we'll take away your voting and you're going to have to go stand in line at our horrible government office to get your new registration. It's yeah. I'm kind, of, uh, kind of fascist, man. Kind of Kafka-esque, isn't I'm it? I'm looking at the uh, the law online, but it doesn't say when it was passed, so I don't know if this is new or not, but it's pretty yeah. cool. I, I think uh, she's going to frame this. It's basically... An anarchy registration card. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Nice. Without without having to let the state know that you're an anarchist. Yeah. The state's letting you know that, hey, we recognize that you're an anarchist. Yeah. It's uh it's the to be droned list, probably. 
Uh, yeah. Although if you're a libertarian party, you, vote or die, vote or die. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I, I was up all night compiling lists of radio stations. We're going to contact when we get syndicated in a month. And, uh, yeah, man. And, you know, I was thinking yeah, too, man. like if I get droned, I think you need to be like, like that little whore in, uh, in hustle and flow who's like has the little headset telephone and is just calling radio stations 24 <laughs> seven you, you got to replace me with a rotating cast of guests of like ben quaker and your brother and you know garrett okay and uh yeah. D and dj i'm sure she'd have things to say about me if i were droned yeah and yeah. uh but then to you keep gotta, on the p diddy tip uh we can't stop and we won't stop so. right but you got to get the little headset yeah. and be like that little whore in hustle and flow who was calling the why radio do stations. i have to be like a little whore you're just trying to bdsm me michael <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't want to be a little whore i'm not your little whore <laughs> well oh, i would be your little whore boy. put it this way let's make a pact right now in the air if one of us gets droned arrested get mode whatever you know shot with some flu that makes our brain scramble uh the other person will be like the little whore in hustle and flow calling radio stations 24 7 to get get more of it on the air to talk about it okay all right Yes, I will, I will be your little packed. whore. I will, Although, Nima Vidati, I will be your little whore. Now you say it to me. <laughs> Raise your hand. Take a pledge. Uh, do I have to? Take a pledge of that? allegiance to anarchy. All right. All right. I pledge allegiance to Michael W. Dean to that be I a little whore a little. if he gets droned. <laughs> Thank you. And In the United uh, States of America. And then I'm raising my hand and I'll just say ditto. <laughs> <laughs> Insert bastard. Nima's name for mine. So, yeah. Uh, Okay. Yeah. So you were kind of angry today. What's up? What What is this? Stefan Molyneux show? You're trying to get at my, my psychiatry? My I don't even need to ask you about your childhood because I can what call your know? mother and ask her, unlike Stefan Molyneux. <laughs> I have her on call speed dial. Is that let's what you're call, threatening now? Let's first call, let's first call I'm her. your little whore, and now you're going to call my mom. <laughs> I'm going to well, call your mom start. my little whore. Yeah. <laughs> Well, okay. What did you say? What did you, you say about my mama? Let's not talk about... I didn't say anything about your mama. All right. You better not. Okay. Let's talk about people who've mysteriously died this week. Former Casper mm -hmm. Mayer found dead. Uh, his name was... What was his name? Something weird. Um, was he was Larry arrested... Clapp? Larry Clapp. Who was... Um, a lot of people have reason to kill him. He was the former mayor of Casper. You don't be a mayor of a city without making some enemies. He was a criminal oh, yeah. defense attorney. They make DAs look like hell all the time. And he was a state rep for a while. So um, this guy was found with kitty porn. The, the official story in the paper was that when he was confronted with it, he was like, you've got my computer. You know what I have. But who knows if he said that? You know, it could be a setup. He shot mm. himself this week. Um, mm. The co-inventor of RSS was found yeah. dead 26 year old yeah. kid internet activist who was facing 50,000 years in federal prison for uh basically accessing information from mit that wasn't secured and making it public uh was right. found dead yeah. hung himself okay and two gun well, bloggers and big, big advocate he was he was against sopa he was outspoken for the fact that copying isn't stealing and it's just ones and zeros and the best he, he he had some quote about how information and knowledge is power and you know we we can't keep that power concentrated we need to spread it because that's the the good thing to do and he took a very he took a stance that was like it's moral to to let the world share all this knowledge because it's doable and you don't have to violate anything to do it so the state definitely did not like that guy yep and then two prominent gun YouTube vloggers were found dead, one in a car accident, one uh, murdered, and he didn't pull his gun, so he was ambushed. Right. Uh, he was a guy who carries a gun. People are right. saying that that's Obama's death squads assassinating gun activists, uh, you know, like Obama's kill list. Hmm. I, I don't think know. I don't, Larry think Clapp was on it. I don't think Larry Clapp was on it. No. But I think that, that, uh, uh, I think that blogger might have been on the kill list. Yeah. I don't know. I go back and forth. I wonder if they're good enough to do it that cleanly and unsloppily. But then again, the media's in their hand, too. So I think that's pretty sure sloppy, the, though. I'm sure the PIOs are saying things and the reporters just report them back. So. Well, I mean, we'll I have feel like more about Obama's kill list coming up after we sell some things. <laughs> right. Alleged kill list. Well, no, he has a kill list. He says he does. 
He does. We don't know if these people are on it or not. Are we on it? A science fiction comic adventure from Big Head Press. Quantum Vibe. It's year 2523. There are colonies on Venus, Mars, and Mercury. People travel in bubbles, fly at hyperspeed. With brain implants and artificial gravity. A scientific genius and his clever assistant set out on an adventure through the solar system on a secret mission to find the key to access new frontiers and save liberty. Quantum vibe. There's a robot girl and zany creatures made with genetically engineered features. And corporate villains crave the opportunity to steal a profit from my other's ingenuity. A scientific genius and his clever assistant set out on an adventure through the solar system on a secret mission to find the key to access new frontiers and save liberty. Quantum This is Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends. I've been on the World Wide Web since its inception in 1994. I've tried dozens of web providers in that time. The only one that hasn't broken my heart is HostGator. HostGator has unlimited server space, unlimited throughput, and a guaranteed uptime of better than 99.9% .9 for only $150 a year. You can pay a little less elsewhere, but you'll pull out your hair dealing with anyone else. HostGator has great service and unlimited tech support only a phone call away 24-7, 365. HostGator is where pros like the Fiends host because we know how to do it right. Go to freedomfiends.com and click on the HostGator affiliate link on the right sidebar to sign up today. This is Mr. Michael Dean on the Freedom Fiends. Do we have Nima? Hello, Nima. Nima's been droned by the... Hello, hello. Hey, can you hear me, Nima? Nima can't hear me. So, uh, yeah. 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 Well, I'm, I'm broadcasting here on the Nima tubes, on the Freedom tubes. I don't know what happened to Nima. But uh, I'm going to talk about stuff. So, I don't know. Nima, where are you? Yeah. Yeah. So, I'm live. Yeah, I'm typing to Nima. I don't know what to do here, Nima. Nima, I think, uh, yeah, did your wife knock you offline? Yeah. All right. So I'm going to go with the show here, and I'm going to read some items that we've got. Uh, people can call in. No, we can't. The calling computer is not on. So Wyoming lawmakers propose gun protection legislation. This is pretty damn cool. There's a... Um, you know, Wyoming is is a state where the lawmakers like to pass laws that probably never get enforced, like the Wyoming Fire and Freedom yeah! Act. Hello? That was, uh, I think we need to stop and listen. I think uh, Nima's in trouble. Nima? Yeah. Yeah. Nima, are you there? I heard that. I heard that. You screamed. Yeah. So, Wyoming right. is... Are you there, Nima? I'm back. Yep. Are you there? Was that you screaming? I'm here. Was that you screaming? Yes, my dog wouldn't shut the fuck up. I thought so you I got droned, to. man. I was I was talking about the Wyoming law about firearms, and I stopped. I was like, I think we're witnessing history in the making here. <laughs> I think Nima's being being swatted. Yeah. Ah, no, thank God I wasn't. I don't know what happened. It was just weird. All of a sudden, I couldn't hear anything. It's Everything the was central still scrutinizer, man. Well, it's the central I, scrutinizer. you know, and then and then my mind goes through all the troubleshooting because my mother-in-law just arrived and my dog is acting an ass. And when he goes and prances around like a little faggot, he knocks shit over. And so I was worried he knocked out the cable modem or something. Unlike he's not um, prancing around like a little whore. That that actually not like is a little good because little whores no, work hard. No. They get the little telephone headset and call DJs and blow them uh, they to get do. their get their master's yes. uh voice on the air. Yes. Hit yes. her but master's what I was saying, voice. Right. What I was saying before I got cut off though was um one of these dudes that that was killed uh he was the partner in this thing called FPS Russia. We're on to a, a different story. We we are literally on to a different oh. story here, but um Yeah, but why do we always have okay. to skip the things I want to say? Well, 
I, I will just say that I was in the middle of a different story, but you can go back to your story. Go ahead. This is no, good radio, no, man. Go good ahead. radio. I, no, you're right. You're right. I'm, I'm breaking the flow. Okay, go on. We'll just skip it. <laughs> you're and mad. I'll just give me. Let me. Let me just give a little pitch. Go watch. Uh, go YouTube FS Russia. Watch it if you haven't already. It will brighten your day and it will support uh, this this whole enterprise. Even though one of the dudes died, it's really important to let. If if the state had any hand in it at all, which I'm not saying they did, but if they did. Um, Doing things like still supporting it will let them know, hey, you can't just kill some of us and think that you're going to win. You can't win that way. The ideas will always be alive. You can't kill them, no matter how many of us you kill. So go watch FPS Russia. They're really awesome. It's a dude in a fake Russian accent blowing shit up with the most coolest weapons you'll ever see. Go do it. Cool. All right. Back onto your story. Cool. I, no, I want to break the flow a little bit, break the hustle and flow, and talk about everything that just happened because it was pretty funny. It was uh, okay. I want to point out our mistakes and our problems. Not that you made a mistake. It was you know what what happened first of all. So I we know, know man, it wasn't I just, the central I, scrutinizer. Or I, was I, it? I, st- I stopped hearing anything and I went through the normal troubleshooting, but it had nothing to do with that. All of a sudden, my my computer was on mute. So somehow I must have pressed mute. But there's no mute shortcut that I know of. I well, guess what that's kind why of, I pressed what it. Kind of, I didn't know what, of it. what kind of what's what uh, flavor of dog do you have? It's an Alaskan Malamute. Malamute. See, Malamute. I think he did it. He walks in the room and it mutes your malleableness. Mm, maybe that bastard. Yeah. So yeah. Wyoming, uh, let's look at House Bill HB0104. I don't usually care about laws and I don't think I'm really going to feel protected by this, but I like it because basically it means I'm not alone in freaking out about the fact that the president wants to kill me because I used to own guns. I don't own any anymore. I lost them in a voting accident. But uh, <laughs> do you want to do you want to read some of this bill or? Let, uh, yeah, it's it's a short bill. It's it's a great Wyoming. Wyoming bills state are all short. Bill. Yeah, they're short and to the point. And I'm not saying I'm on nuts or anything because FTG. You know, governments are always really stupid. But uh, this is kind of cool because. Well, I'll just read it. All right. All right. State of Wyoming, House Bill number HB0104, a bill for, and this is the text, an act relating to firearms providing that any federal law which attempts to ban a semi-automatic firearm or to limit the size of a magazine of a firearm or other limitation on firearms in this state shall be unenforceable in Wyoming. Yes. (laughs) Providing a penalty and providing for an effective date. Be it enacted by the legislature of the state of Wyoming. Here's section 1, WS 6-8-405 is amended to read. All right, offenses and penalties, defense of Wyoming citizens. A, no public servant as defined in blah, 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 or dealer selling any firearm in this state shall enforce or attempt to enforce any act, law, statute, rule, or regulation of the United States government relating to a personal firearm firearm accessory or ammunition that is owned or manufactured commercially or privately in Wyoming and that remains exclusively within the borders of Wyoming. Now, I like that they add owned in there because originally it said manufactured, but uh, that's just really re- reinstating the Wyoming Firearms Freedom Act. This one is more goes further because it says owned. It says the guns you already have, if you don't leave right. the state, you can have them. Now, yeah. the, the Wyoming Firearms Freedom Act... You know, there are like eight, six or eight states that have passed those. And Wyoming is the only one that offered felony uh, punishment for federal Up employees. Up to a year in jail yeah. for, um, for federal employees. They would throw but, them in the Wyoming jail. But that's one that likely won't be tested because there's only one firearm manufacturer here. And they basically make two guns. One is some $7,000 hunting rifle that no one probably, you know, probably four people own in the state. And one is a five four five five four five casual revolver which is a hand cannon which not many people would buy actually so, there, there was more than one uh there's a squared which is i think the one you're talking about and then there's another there's uh, at least one or two other companies that do yeah. very expensive custom right uh gunsmithing and and but a squared they also have a lot of guns they've they've got the giant rifles but they've got They've got oh, yeah, yeah, several yeah. varieties. They have the Tyrannosaurus it, 577 that they have the, right. the, the video, YouTube on video YouTube of the with Saudi a million, princes shooting. Yes, and, yes and, getting knocked on their ass. Yeah. yeah. But uh, 
which I actually saw before I knew it was Wyoming. It was pretty funny. Um, I was proud we of it. We actually tried to we tried to contact that guy to advertise on free advertising. Yeah, yeah. He never right. got back to us. Yeah, he was he was a cool guy though, man. I, I met him and he was like some West Point graduate who hates the government now and makes but, guns. And but you know, goes as far on hunting as, adventures in but Africa. There's, a, there's only one Saudi prince listening to the Freedom Fiend, so it's not really a good uh, advertising <laughs> budget thing for him. But once yeah. we're on radio, yeah. once we're on radio next right. month, yeah, <laughs> we act like little whores and get the little he- right. earphone headsets. So, so, um, so so far so far with this bill, yeah, that seems to be the the big difference is. Uh, the Wyoming Firearms Freedom Act was, you know, manufactured. This is owned, which means any gun, right? Yeah, that, because that you, because none of the no, I don't know anybody who owns guns manufactured in Wyoming. But this covers all the other guns. So yeah, I yeah. was really proud of this. This was making the rounds on Twitter on the Twitterverse, mm-hmm. and I was like, everyone's like, I want to move to Wyoming. I wish I were in Wyoming, and I'm like, I'm in Wyoming. way ahead of you guys all right yeah uh, we'll be right back with more of this after we sell some guns to saudi princes uh want to contribute to liberty but short on cash you can help the freedom fiends without even spending a post 1964 dime Download uTorrent and start seeding Fiends episodes and DVDs to help keep us drone-proof. There's a Torrent Club link at the top of FreedomFiends.com. There you'll find our Torrent RSS feed and instructions to grab past episodes and automatically download new ones, even while you're away from the computer. You'll also get special episodes of the Fiends and Anarchy Gumbo days or even weeks before regular podcast subscribers who aren't torrenting. Leave your computer on, seeding the torrents while you're at work or asleep. The more people seeding the fiends, the more drone-proof we'll be when the boot comes down. Ugh, I'm so sick of looking at Steve's wedding pics, and I'm all out of passive-aggressive comments. What else am I supposed to do at work all day? Sick of stalking your ex on Facebook? Yeah! Are you all out of cute cats and autocorrect mishaps to lol at? Duh! Freedom Fiends to the rescue! The Fiends now have a blog. Read all about the latest tyranny today. Dream about lip pair. Laugh while Western civilization collapses. Just click on the cat icon to the right of freedomfiends.com. Freedom Fiends blog. Read it! We just had a couple more things to riff on about the... What's the bill called, uh, Michael? Is it... Does it have it's a, called a fancy the, name yet? It's or? called the Get Off My Effing Property Wyoming Rules Leave Us Alone Bill. Yes, the Leave Us Alone Bill. Um, this bill will all- pass. Let me say that. It's Wyoming. This bill will pass, especially with uh, the people who are sponsoring it. These are like some of the movers and shakers, especially Gaggy. I mean, these are... It's going to pass. He- here will be the hilarious thing, though, because when, when the first one passed, which it did easily, uh, everybody was worried that the governor, who was a Democrat and he was a lame duck, would veto it and be like, ah, screw you guys. And he wrote a letter to the effect that, that we need to respect the federal government more than this, but basically reluctantly signing it instead of vetoing it. Wouldn't it be funny if the Republican who ran as a badass gun guy, who went, who, who had me shoot footage of him out at the range shooting and talking big about the federal government and showed me his his, his two two three semi talking big saying, against the federal government, right? Right, saying, "Hey, I bought all these Sig Sauer two two three rifles because Obama's going to take my guns away." It'd be hilarious if he vetoed it. It, it would, and I don't know, he might, man, because he he's a former U.S. federal attorney, and uh, yeah, he is. You know, I I just don't see that anybody changes those stripes. You know, I mean, you hear a lot yeah. of like. You know, like Sheriff Richard Mack used to be a drug warrior, you know, local level, county level, whatever, like quit doing it. You don't hear of Mm -hmm. a lot of people who were like federal big wig for the federal state, like finding finding Jesus. You know, you don't hear a lot of them renouncing and and getting into recovery. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's sad. Why why do you think that is? You you think the money's too sweet or you think they end up getting offed in some way? I think federal attorneys are a special breed of uh you have statist. you have to be a horrible person to you, be that you can't, position in the you first can't place. Be, yeah i don't think you can become you know a lot of good guys become sheriffs but mm-hmm. <laughs> i don't know man good nice kids when they're in, in grade school don't say i want to grow up and be a federal attorney you know? <laughs> No, they, they might say i want to be sheriff but none of them say i want to be a federal attorney i mean federal attorneys yeah. think about them like Think about the guy that went after Tommy Chong, you know, the lady that went after Tommy right. Chong, the fellow attorney, right. like they totally set him up. They like basically 
did uh what's it called when when they like what what's the crime that used to be a crime that isn't now when they set you up and then arrest you entrapment, entrapment. they entrapped him and like spent mm-hmm. years doing it to like arrest him for glass pipes you know yeah yeah oh, it's for something interesting well well in my opinion you have to be at least you have to be either ignorant or a really bad person to be any kind of prosecutorial position in the federal judicial or in the in the state judicial system you know any government prosecutor i think either was a horrible person or they become one or well, they fed, quit you know, federal really early. A t- federal a tyrannies we call them uh, yeah exactly exactly yeah um so yeah, I mean the the bill is probably going to pass and it's going to be great. It would be really interesting if the statist former federal attorney who's now governor of Wyoming vetoed it. Um but one good, other interesting good thing statist, about the bill, you know, kids that are statist that are like really not bad people, they're just statist cuz they don't know any better. Those kids say they want to be a fireman when they grow up. They don't mm-hmm. say I want to be a federal attorney. <laughs> right. 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 Uh although some say I want to be a policeman. And you know, a lot of people give a lot of crap to attorneys like, Oh, attorneys are, who but you know, in a lot of ways, attorneys are the only line of defense against that kind of prosecutorial crap. Well, defense it's attorneys, good to make, you know? it, yeah, it's good to make that distinction. Defense attorneys can, can probably do good in the world. And then p- attorneys that spend their time just suing the government, you know, like yeah. uh, ACLU attorneys and, and people like that. Uh, in some cases, of course, um, but but yeah, man, it was good to see that that they upped the penalties too. Now a, a federal goon who's trying to take your guns away in Wyoming, um, if if the the actual workers, if the actual law enforcement in Wyoming actually enforced this, they could throw that fed goon in jail for not less than one year. So at least a year and one day. It used to be not more than a year. Now it's not less than a year in one day, um, but not more than five years. So they could throw a goon in jail for five years for trying to take your guns away. Now, what's uh, the thing with a year and a day? It sounds biblical. I forgot. No, it, it has something to do with legal technicality for, I think, statistical purposes but or funding purposes. <laughs> like, I forget the real reasoning. They though, get but, more funding to throw you in f- to throw a fed in in state prison. Yeah, maybe they round maybe they round that that day up or something. Two, you know, like two the, years. the cell yeah. phone bill. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we get paid yeah. for the two years. Yeah, something like that. I forget the exact particular. You know, there though. was a guy in Wyoming who was arrested this week um, for terroristic threats. Was the charge, and what he did was he was at the cell phone place in the mall disputing his bill, and they had he he was late on his bill, and they took some of his uh, deposit to pay it, which. I think is probably in any contract for a cell phone company and is, you know, right. you, you agreed yeah. to it. And this yeah. guy started like yelling about like, I'm going to go get my guns and shoot you people. I don't see that as a terroristic threat. I see that as some kind of crime, but it's really weird that they applied terroristic threat to that. Don't you think? I mean, to me, a terroristic threat is doing something to scare society at large. He was yelling mm-hmm. at, you know, some guy at the cell phone store. Right, right. Well, I mean, I think the corporate and the state interests are sort of so melded that, uh, you know, for me, their definition of terrorism is anything that attacks the establishment. I was wondering if it was because it was a cell. I was wondering if it was because it was a cell phone company, like you know how the government has taken over communication to the point where, like, interfering with you know (laughs) the guy in the cell phone store is is the same as like you know blowing up a railroad or something you know like maybe yeah maybe that's part of the deal they made with the telecommunications companies to get all the information about us all the time without a warrant well (laughs) they'll protect them yeah the consideration is we'll act like anybody who disputes you as a terrorist (laughs) anyone who disputes their bill as a terrorist (laughs) we're really like under the real definition of terrorism which is frightening the general public uh a lot of what the government does every government do every whatever government do a lot of it is terrorism you know and think about it think about the drug war yeah we had a whole episode about that well i mean uh, also people define terrorism is is using fear to achieve political means fear of violence to achieve you know political objectives and goals that is government like that's literally what they are so government is almost by definition or I, i would say government is by my definition terrorism well I want to talk a little bit about people's response to Obama's demands that, uh, you know, he's basically saying 
he's going to go around Congress and act like King George and take away the guns without Congress. Um, and it's has, tab- he, has he actually said it though? I thought Biden was hinting at it and the media was hinting at it like they're trying to pressure him into doing it. He's always so wishy washy about that. Did he actually make a statement to that effect? I don't know. I've heard, I've heard Biden, but you know, Biden is kind of the, the Jimmy Carter of vice presidents. He's, or the Billy Carter of vice presidents. No, he's, he's more like, who was H.W. Bush's vice? Dan, he's like the Dan Quayle, like Dan the spell Quayle. potato wrong, Dan like the spelling, spelling bee kind of thing. So I just posted a link. It's, it's short. I think you should read this. It's Claire Wolf's open letter to those who think it's time to take the guns. And it's great. It is beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. And Claire okay, Wolf okay. is well known for being the person who said 15 years ago, we're at an awkward stage in history. It's too late to change things by voting, and it's too early to shoot the bastards. And she said that 15 mm-hmm. years ago. And this, to me, kind of reads like the update of that, and not really saying it's time, but it's. I love the wording of this. Go ahead and read this, please. Okay, I will. Um, <clears throat> me, 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 me. Okay. All right. And you, open you, you, message. You. Yes, exactly. Uh, this is Claire Wolf. Uh, her post from the 10th. It's she's, entitled, a fiend, she's a Fiend fan, by the way. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she's definitely on our side. We're on her um, blog roll. Right. And yeah, vice versa. But, mm-hmm. And she uh, also liked Guns and Weed and enjoyed that thoroughly. Uh, so this is the title of her post. It's called An Open Message to Those Who Think It's Time to Take the Guns. Uh, according to Claire, <clears throat> I am a woman of a certain age. I have silver hair, wrinkles, I'm tired. I don't like conflict. I've never been arrested nor committed an act of violence. I want to lead a peaceful life. I sincerely hope you get to live in peace, too. All right. And we will uh, be back with more of Claire's wonderful message to the weenies after we go sell some some guns to Saudi princes. That's the Claire Wolf cliffhanger. We'll be back. (laughs) This song is Would You Tar and Feather a Tax Collector? I would. I wouldn't. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. What does freedom mean? Tune in to LRN.FM to find out. LRN.FM is the Liberty Radio Network. A collection of live talk radio and podcasts, all coming from a principled pro-liberty perspective. LRN.FM show hosts aren't left, right, or conspiracy kooks. You can tune in 24-7 to LRN.FM via your phone, computer, satellite, and more. Listen free anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. If you like tranny hookers and shooting crocodile, tune in to FreedomFiends.com. Freedom Fiends. Yo! We back, we back, we back. Somebody's uh, trying to call in. I forgot that this is a call-in show, as I always do. We do, but I'm not going to give the number out because somebody's trying to call in. So, well, don't try to call yes. in yet because I'm I'm booting up the uh, call-in computer, uh, and Nima's got to read uh, the rest of the cliffhanger that he left us with the open letter yeah. from Claire Wolf to the yeah. message to those who think it's time to take the guns. We're bad at follow-up. We need to take some Ritalin or some Compliacin or something. Keep keep us I'm, focused. I'm keeping us focused today. <laughs> You're just angry. You're an angry uh, young man with lots yes. of guns. Yes, I am. I'm, I'm an not. Angry I'm half, a mellow. I'm, I'm an a, angry half-white man. I'm a mellow. I'm a mellow old guy of a certain age with wrinkles and graying of hair. A certain age. I'm sorry, my my yeah. beard is starting to get gray. When when I, you say of a certain age, that like I don't know. It even sounds old. Like. <laughs> I, I know that's what it's supposed cer- to do, but... When you become of a certain age, 
All right, read yeah, this sounds, letter. Sounds, sounds like they're read about this TV letter. Sex talk. Read this letter from this cranky old white lady with too many guns who lives in the hills. <laughs> All right, so um, I only finished the first paragraph, which she said, I'm certain age, yeah, i never done anything violent, yada, yada, yada. Okay, next paragraph. She basically I, said, I'm grandma, and, yeah. and, and I'm and not I'm never, violent. Yeah. Right, right. So now, I am also a gun owner. Some of the guns I own are ones you want to take away or limit my ability to possess or use. You want to do this despite the fact that I've never used them for any aggressive purpose and don't want to. You want to do it to other people I know, despite the fact that their guns are no threat to you or yours. As a gun owner who hopes to live a long, peaceful, free life and be a valuable member of my community, I have this to say to you, and I speak only for me, but I am not alone. So you believe guns will go away after you've forbidden them? They will go away exactly as much as liquor did during the 1920s, as much as illegal drugs have. Welcome to Prohibition, and the drug war, and all the futile violence they spawned times ten. So you imagine your loved ones will be safer because you've made our loved ones subject to your whim? You are putting everyone at greater risk. So you believe that only police and soldiers should have guns? So did millions of other people who died at the hands of their paid quote-unquote protectors. Study the history of genocide. So you're a member of some elite class and you believe you and your privileged friends will always be protected by armed guards, police, or soldiers? Fine. Enjoy the history of the Praetorian Guard. So you believe that regulations, transfer taxes, permissions, paperwork, and more power for the most abusive, inept, and racist federal agency can be used to squeeze the firearms out of honest hands, even if there's no outright ban? Then you don't know millions of your fellow citizens. You don't know us. But you aim to take from us. So you believe that we should spend 10 years in prison, or 10 times 10, Merely for possessing objects that you fear and want to put under the National Firearms Act. Mere ownership of mere things, tools or parts of tools like magazines. You wish this hideous fate for us, your peaceable fellow, fellow citizens. Without knowing us, you despise us that much. So you believe we are your enemy. We are that only if you declare war on us. Leave us alone and we'll leave you alone. We and our firearms may even protect you from harm. So you fear armed Americans so much that you'll try to disarm us at any cost? The cost of our lives? The cost of our freedom? Okay then, we'll give you reason to fear. So you believe that you can use executive power or backdoor chicanery to bypass restrictions on government authority? Fine. We'll show you which force ultimately restricts government. Once government has shaken off all other limits on its power. So you believe we'll turn our guns and our lives over to you just because you demand it? Molan Labe, come and take them. So you believe that we, the ones you have already declared to be evil, violent, fanatical, ruthless, fringed, and so very, very dangerous that we can't be trusted around children? You think we'll merely submit to your will? Molan Labe. So you think your police and soldiers will be willing to kick down our doors to get our unregistered, privately held or banned guns and throw us into prisons for decades merely for owning tools? You think your armed violent agents will do this to us time and time again in the false cause of preventing violence? You think hired guns will do this dirty work for you year after ruthless, fruitless, defiant year? Yes, given the mentality of hired guns, some will. Some. The chaos they create will ultimately be laid at your doorstep. Molan Labe, come and take our guns, if you have the courage of your convictions. Wow. That was a very um, stunning and sexy reading of that, too, Nima. Oh, thank you. I have a cat on my lap. <laughs> Peanut. Ah, yes. Comes to I'm a cat. peaceful well, guy, man. I'm know. a peaceful guy. Who doesn't want to bother anybody and just wants to pet cats and love my wife and yell on the internet? Yeah. What's wrong yeah. with that? 
Nothing's Nothing. wrong with it, man. Nothing, man. I have I have a cat story too. You know, I won't be outdone. We have a we have a cat that's moved into our patio. Just decided to start sleeping on our couch on the patio because it's been kind of chilly at night. And um, he's like we've we've called him Squatter. He's been there for like a week now. And he spends all day on our outside couch, and then he'll come look at us through the window when he wants food, and we'll give him food and water. Um, he won't Aww. come in though. And my, my wife really wants him to come in and she wants him to be our inside cat. But I think he's feral cause we have a feral cat Ooh. colony around here and I don't think he likes Ooh. people. Like, when, yeah, I would take him the, to a vet before you bring him in the house too. If you do. Yeah. Well, we've actually let him in the, in the house a few times. He'll come and he'll sit under the piano bench, which is close to the, to the sliding glass door of the patio, but he won't let any human touch him. He's really you, interested in, in the cats though. How do your other cats and, and your dog respond to him? Well, we have a bitch cat named um, Phoebe who acts like she's a princess and she pees on everything and, and I hate her. Um, is that what princesses do? Pee on everything? That's not <laughs> what they did in my storybooks as a child. Well, it'd be a lot hotter if they did. Well, the no. princess and the pee on me. I remember that story. The princess <laughs> and, the, and the pee-pee kitty. Nice, nice. So, um, but our other two cats, which are really friendly and cuddly, uh, they like her, and they'll go up to her and sort of rub against the sliding glass window when she's outside. Although I guess I don't know if if Squatter is a he or a she, but we've been calling her a she. So guns and the Second Amendment. Um, guns, is, yes. You know, we, ha- we had to take the diversion to cats because yeah. that's just how the fiends work. We needed a a, a unicorn chaser. After that, <laughs> after, after yeah. hearing about the tyranny that she's worried right. about, uh, right, right. you know, the interesting thing is, I believe the Second Amendment has never been used in America to the extent that there's never been a Second Amendment shooting. There has never right. been a government tyrant shot by a gun owner who says, I'm doing this because the right to bear arms keep, allows me to defend against tyrannical government. Um, there's never been one. I mean, some politicians have been shot, but it's always some nut who just wants attention. Well, what about the war for Southern independence? I mean, couldn't you consider okay. those? They, yeah. they weren't for taking guns away, but they were they were citizens using the Second Amendment to avoid being conquered. I guess by the yeah. federal government. I w- okay. Let me rephrase that. In modern, in my lifetime, okay. You know, of all the shootings that there have ever been, there's never been one, and. From what I'm hearing on the internet, there are going to be a bunch of them if uh, if these laws are passed, and yeah. I, I'm not I'm not going to be one of the ones doing it. I don't even have any guns. I lost them in a voting accident. But uh, there are, you know, I, I've run across. If you go to Sipsy Street Irregulars or any of those blogs and read the links off them and read the comments, you know, a quick perusal of that says there are, you know. A few hundred people who say, I'm going to start shooting if this happens. Mm-hmm. And that's just the ones that are dumb enough to say it on the internet. I'd say that there are probably a million people saying that now. And, right. uh, you know, a lot and- of them are probably all talk, but a lot of them aren't. So, and there's no recognition of that by the people talking about banning guns. I mean, I guess you have Alex Jones and Larry Pratt saying it's going to be 1776 if this happens on Pierce Butthole Morgan. But, mm-hmm. you know, the people talking about the bannings, there is no discussion publicly among the, amongst them of people are going to start shooting if this happens. Right. Well, they don't want that to be even a thought in their supporters' minds. They don't want that to be a thought in Congress's minds or a thought in the enforcers' minds. They want to avoid that kind of talk, which is why on, on one hand, I really wonder if, if it's a really good thing to be very vocal about this kind of stuff, to really let people know that – you know, America's not, or, or, or gun owners aren't going to take this sitting down and cowering. They're not going to turn their guns into the federal smelter. They're just not going to do it. I wonder if, if the more vocal they are about that, uh, the more likely the, the Fed goons are to back off. Um, or I worry conversely that, that it'll make the Fed goons quietly um, put, I mean, that, the the what is it department of homeland security all the different federal agencies getting all this ammunition all these tanks these bear cats i wonder if it just makes them more forceful when they do come to take the guns and i don't know what the answer is well i just wonder if this has all been planned for 10 or 20 years and that's why all these agencies have all this military equipment now maybe maybe we'll explore that more after this long break folks in hour two we have to start saying in hour two because that's how it's yes. gonna be on the radio uh, radio radio Radio. We're not saying the Freedom Fiends are the one true path to anarchist liberation. 
but it's a good one. If you want to put your voluntarist money where your mouth is, consider making a donation to the Freedom Fiends. Go to freedomfiends.com and click on the spinning coin on any post. Then make a one-time gift via PayPal or set up a monthly contribution of as little as $3. Giving to the Freedom Fiends helps advance education of horizontal liberation throughout the world. The Freedom Fiends. We work hard, so send us some money. You've read books, attended lectures, and you know the Constitution well enough to know it's a well-crafted blueprint to create an ever-increasing federal empire. But there's still one thing missing. Buttons! Freedom Fiends now has buttons. You'll get state speech is hate speech, anarchy gumbo, guns and weed, and two designs for the Freedom Fiends. Wear them with pride. Use them to start conversations with statists. It's only $10 for five buttons, including shipping. Go to freedomfiends.com and click on the link at the top that says buttons. Freedom nice. Fiends. Freedom Fiends That's just us. ordered something on the internet. Be proud yeah. of us. Uh, somebody <laughs> wants us to mention a new website called freeradicalnetwork.com. Looks, uh, looks interesting. Awesome. Um, were we done with that topic? I have one that is rather interesting as a follow-up, but I don't want to... Have Nimi yell and scream and kick me. Go for it. I'm, I'm more relaxed now. I, I ingested some nicotine and a little bit of alcohol, so oh. go for it. <laughs> Were you really? You you hadn't yet? I hadn't yet, no. <laughs> or did you ingest something else? No, no, just nicotine uh, and alcohol. Okay. So um, there's this thing that uh, we want to move into show prep here. Somebody sent us this uh, Lib Pair or Waco 2. And the website is iiicitadel.com. It's iiicitadel.com. And if you're in our chat room, as you should be, which you can go to by going on the Freedom Fiend site and clicking on the uh, chat link, uh, you'd be there. If you were there, you'd be home. So look at this website, Nima. It's a group of people in Idaho who are starting a community, which is interesting because um, Glenn Beck announced this week he's starting some planned constitutional patriot community in Florida. Oh. This one sounds a lot more fun, the one in Idaho. <laughs> uh, you know, and there's no names associated with it. I was wondering if this was anything to do with the micro effect, that patriot radio network we got kicked off of. Um, oh, because yeah. one of those guys actually tried to start, they're from Idaho, and one of them tried to start a... Uh, like sell timeshares in a patriot Christian constitutionalist community. And I don't know what happened with it, but it doesn't exist. And I think the locals got really upset about it. But this one is not Christian specific. Um, it's patriot and constitution specific. And it basically looks like they took the charter of Free State Wyoming uh, not the Free State Project, New Hampshire, but Free State Wyoming, and decided, well, we can't do it in a whole state, so we're going to do it in four square blocks, and we're going to sell yeah. deeds. And um, yeah, you know, and on I looked at their FAQ. It's uh, they don't care what race you are, they don't care what religion you are. In fact, there will not be houses of worship in it, but they do have things in their charter like um, all males over the age of thirteen who live here will be required to be able to. Uh, you know, hit a man-sized target at 400 yards. No, hit a hit a hit a paper plate, hit a dinner plate at 100 yards, which is not that much of a feat. I guess probably a lot of 13-year-olds can't do it. You and I can do it, but uh, and we're barely we're not riflemen. Uh, well, we, thir we thir thirteen-year-olds could do it with uh, some training. I mean, it's not an impossible thing to achieve. It just seems like it would require some practice, which I think is what they're getting at there. Yeah. Is Whereas you know, really, to be a rifleman. Uh, to pass the the AQT, the Army Qualification, ATQ, whatever, the Army thing that, that uh, Appleseed uses, it's the equivalent, it, it's basically the equivalent of, uh, I think, hitting a dinner plate at 300 yards repeatedly. And mm. the Free State Wyoming Rifleman Badge, uh, it's hit a dinner plate at 500 yards repeatedly, I believe, which nice. is really, that's that's some real shooting there. That's but, tough, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was uh, in an apple with the seed. scope or I, with iron sights, though. Either I was yeah. I was at a uh, I was at a, an apple seed, and there was a 16 year old girl who qualified. That was pretty nice. awesome. Yeah, she's awesome with a yeah. two two three. Yep, nice with an AR. Nice with her daddy's <laughs> AR. And yeah. I well, and hey, she you was, don't know if it was her daddy's. Maybe uh, she got a little Hello Kitty. AR I know her daddy. Her oh, okay. 
Yeah, her daddy was Who, walking around picking up, picking up brass and uh, to sell. Ah, so ah. I, I talked to him. I've been to his house for Thanksgiving. It was her daddy's yeah. AR. But it was kind of shaming because uh, she did better than DJ and I did. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of brass, um, the little girl. Uh, shoot, you shoot like a. You don't even shoot like a little girl. <laughs> a little girl shoots better than you. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. let's talk more about this Citadel. Are you looking at the site? Yeah, yeah, I'm looking at it. Um, you were going to go off and talk uh, about cats, weren't you? I could feel it. Uh, brass, no brass. Um, but let's keep talking about the Citadel. I um, I am looking at it. This is the first time I looked at it. It seems all right, I guess. Um, I don't know. I kind of don't like the name Citadel. I, I I'm not sure exactly historically. And they have a picture I, of a castle, wrong, like a Christian yeah, I, castle with you know. Yeah, I kind of feel like for me it has a connotation of. I don't know feudalism or, but I guess it's supposed to be like protection, like of this land. Read the yeah, con- so that- okay. Click on uh, l- about and click on the the map that they have there of the uh, Citadel okay. artist r- concept. Okay, it's uh, got walls around it. It looks like it's about oh twenty square blocks. Um, there's something in the middle called the John Parker Green. I should probably know who John Parker is, but I don't. Um, there's a firearms museum and reflecting pool. I like that nice. together. You yeah. reflect, you go look at the firearms museum, then you reflect at the reflecting pool. Uh, there's, there's also an arms factory. Yep. Yeah. They they yeah. do have a gun company. It's uh, some people involved with it have a gun company. There's nice. an amphitheater where the freedom fiends will be performing, <laughs> <laughs> doing our stand up tour of of square states where you can bring your gun uh, <laughs> interior defensive walls and towers farmers market uh, it's like triple wall there's there's an yeah. outer gate there's a, a wall in internally of that and then there's walls throughout the different uh sections of it too yeah i don't see any uh any iron what's what's the anti-missile system called in israel Iron Dome. I don't see any Iron Dome type anti drone. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm really thinking like, you know, someone said Libpair or or Waco two, and I don't yeah. want to even really make jokes about like this would be Waco two. But I will say, if they get this off the ground, I think they're going to have some federal attention, and uh, I think mm-hmm. the feds would probably try to plant somebody living in there. But yeah. uh, and then get them out before. I mean, this would be a drone rich target target rich drone environment you know i don't think they would yeah. try to send fed goons in to uh take over a community of a couple hundred people where everyone over 13 is a rifleman and required by s- city law to be one yeah yeah um i don't know i guess i guess i won't really have more to say about that until there's some actual movement on it i mean they, I, I guess they've bought the land, movement. but they haven't they haven't built anything. Is that the case right now? Uh, I guess. Yeah, they're selling. Yeah. I don't think they're selling deeds yet, but they have an application form, and it's a. It, it doesn't say what the fee is, but it says if you're rejected, you'll be refunded minus a thirty three dollar administrative fee, and uh, you can pay in gold or silver or PayPal to uh, yeah. apply. Yeah. Yeah, um, it says our children will be educated instead of indoctrinated. Um, huh? I don't know. I, I guess it has potential, but I fear it could go off in the wrong direction. One, one of the questions is: do you, one of the questions on the application is: Do you agree to abide constitutional laws of the state of Ohio, Idaho and the United States government? Um, mm, which you yeah. know, I guess if guns are outlawed, you could still have them and agree to that. Because you'd be abiding right. by the Constitution of the United States and the state of Idaho, which I think you know, I think the Idaho State Constitution is similar to the Wyoming one in that it says everyone over seventeen is the militia unless they have religious reasons not to be. Yeah, I, I just kind of worry that if that's the concept, they're missing they're missing real freedom. You know, if if you're tying your society to something like the Constitution uh, or a state constitution too, I mean. The next question is, are you now or have you ever been a member of or associated with any racist group or subversive association that espouses the violent overthrow of the United States government? So it really sounds to me like they're trying to do this as a defensive kind of place, which I like, Yeah. um, Yeah. which may have not been the issue at some other uh, planned communities like this. Um, But, you know, 
I don't know when they when they start poking holes in your walled city and injecting nerve gas. I mean, it's self defense, yeah. right? Uh, <laughs> yeah, it is. The other uh, kind of red flag for me was um, this statement in, in in the front page. It says the Citadel is not profit driven. Citadel is liberty driven. Specifically, what, Thomas yeah. Jefferson's rightful liberty. What's the problem um, with it being both? Yeah, that's your point, right? That's my point. Yeah, both. And I think it would have a better chance of making it if it was both. That's my 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 t- thought. Yeah, that's my other worry. Is is you kind of worry about the lefty communes who failed because they didn't really understand economics and how they could allocate resources properly. They just did it sort of a oh well, you know, well I'll share and it'll be hunky dory. Um, yeah. So I don't know. I feel like the profit motive is really important, and you shouldn't denigrate it. Yeah. Yeah. But we'll be back with more Freedom Fiends coming up what soon. What if the? Have you swallowed too much of the state's poison? The Freedom Fiends will stick their fingers down your throat and hold your hair back while you hurl. Check out the new show, The Freedom Fiends Agenda, on Freedom Fiends Radio. Click on the blue Listen link at FreedomFiends.com, streaming live every Thursday from 4 to 6 p.m. East Coast, U.S. time, on Freedom Fiends Radio at FreedomFiends.com. The Freedom Fiends agenda is Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati's fun and feisty chat about market anarchy, self-defense, real money, the digital police state, activism, DIY media, sex pets, and rock and roll. Call in soon before they get droned. Live studio number 307-215-5171 or via Skype to username kittyfeet1. Listen live at freedomfiends.com. That's freedomfiends.com. We have on the line there. This is Link in Idaho. Link in Idaho. What do you think of them weird patriot types that run your state, run over your state? I think they fit in just fine, act. Don't you have a state? Uh, don't you have a spot up in northern Idaho? Don't you have a state rep there who's a constitutionalist who's also black? Mm, I don't think so. Because a lot of people, uh, you you used to, because he's on the SPLC hit list site. Because uh, a lot of people, a lot of people think of Idaho as racist white. Is is Idaho racist and white? Not really. We had some Aryan Nation stuff actually up in the same end of the state back in the nineties, but they got more or less bankrupted by federal lawsuits. Yeah, yeah. Neem and I have a friend in Wyoming who's a black guy who's from Wyoming who says that. Uh, he he has never been like dissed for being black in Wyoming or Idaho, so that kind of puts to rest what a lot of people think about that. It's a good myth to keep people out. <laughs> keep people, all people, yeah, because white people won't move there either because they're like, I want to live where everyone's loved. I want to live where everyone's loved, and you know, based on what they do, not what they are, not what they look like. My my half black half sister was conceived in Idaho. Huh. So I was conceived in New Jersey, which is why I hate statism. It's in my blood. <laughs> good, good. So, Link, have you ever heard of this Citadel thing in Idaho? Before it even came to be, yes. Oh, tell yes. us about it. I've yeah, heard what are your of thoughts? the 3% back, back as far as 11, 2011, I guess, before they were really even talking about Citadel. And... Just this past year, kind of followed as they were putting the project together. I actually have a friend from back in Pennsylvania that got in at their founders level. Is it uh, is it the people from the Micro Effect Radio Network? Do you know who they are? I don't. I don't think so. It's if you go to three percent dot com, the three percent patriots. It's related to them. The the three percent arms company. Well, you've got three arms. You've got three. Cons- Three Construction, they've got Three Citadel. There's a bunch of different groups now that are starting to form using that name that are all part of that kind of umbrella project of the Citadel. And they and don't seem what, particularly Christian, which is different from what a lot of these groups have been in the past. Do you know about that, if they are? Uh, maybe, maybe not in your face about it. Hmm. Uh, I would be surprised if they weren't. But, hmm. I mean, not. I, I don't think that's anything that's part of their founding principles. I haven't seen anything that suggests that in anything I've seen. Cool. I would kind of be at odds with Liberty. So uh, what is what are the locals' response to this? 
I'm actually kind of surprised. We, you got to realize Northern Idaho and Southern Idaho is almost like Eastern PA and Western PA. Maybe not quite as bad, but it's like two separate countries. Like Washington so state down, and yeah, Wyoming like down in, and see. Wyoming. Although, so in Wyoming, the Western part of the state is the nanny part. Is that how it is in Idaho? Boise, very much Boise in the surrounding areas. Uh, basically we're like little orange County here. Uh, mm. Which part of the state is Boise in? Southwest. Sort of, huh. That's weird. Yeah, it, it's weird because it, the closer you get to, to California in Idaho, the more nanny it is. But then it it rip, it starts over in Washington because then the east the east side of Wyoming is the yep. the red state side, and the west side is the blue state side. Each so basically each the same state pattern over in Wyoming. Yeah. And in, and in Wyoming, yeah. The, well, the, and Washington. Washington and Oregon are both kind of the same, too. Yeah, so each state is like a microcosm of the country in this part of the... <laughs> Pennsylvania is, I'd say, the inverse. Well, yeah, because you're getting closer to the East Coast. Coast. States yeah. With Philly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Wyoming's interesting, too, because I don't really feel like one side is one way and the other side is the other way. It's more like in the northwest corner where Jackson is it's more statist. And then in the Southeast corner where, um, where Cheyenne is, it's more statist because it's closer to Denver. I always call so, it Denver North. So it's kind of like a diamond, uh, shaped sort of like the, the Liberty, uh, the, the, the libertarian parties, uh, you know, up, down, left, right continuum political spectrum. Cause the, yeah. the upper right corner, the Northern Northeastern corner of Wyoming is where the big concentration of free state Wyoming people are. Too. Right. Right. Cause there's Although, nothing up there. They don't like us to say that. Yeah. Yeah. I, Ian Freeman always complains uh, on his radio show that, you know, I don't even know if is free state Wyoming even still a thing. I never hear anything <laughs> from them. And it's like, yeah, there are a bunch of people who don't want to be known. You know, there are a bunch of people who want to be left alone and they're not on the internet. And uh, that's why you haven't heard of them, you know? So link enlighten us. What's the 3% thing? Like on the Citadel website, there's also, it's like a Roman numeral. There's three eyes before it says Citadel. Yes. Uh, what's, it's, it's, got, it's got to do with the concept. Revolutionary War. Mm -hmm. And at the most, the population that supported the war actively was 3% of the population. Mm -hmm. right. That's yeah. all it takes. It's the, Sip, the Sipsy Street Irregular blog. They call exactly. themselves the three percenters, which is uh, you know, basically saying 3% of the gun owners in America could uh, defend themselves. Could 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 win a war? Could win win another revolutionary war? I guess is something like that, or you know, defend yeah. against here. It's basically a reference back to the the revolutionary war that started the country. Yeah, yeah. I guess my fear though is that you know the revolutionary war. It didn't really. There wasn't really a revolution in the way society worked. It was more of a war of independence from Britain. Uh, I mean, just a few years later, you had. Um, you know, the Constitution again and the centrally planned government and you had Washington going in to quash the Whiskey Rebellion so that they would pay high taxes on whiskey so that Washington could directly profit from that since he distilled whiskey. And you just had more of the same, just the tyrants were closer. They were on the continent instead of across the Atlantic. Um, so, I mean, is does that play into these people's minds or do they look with rose colored glasses on the American revolution and just think, well, we need to do that again. Cause I kind of worry that we just start the same cycle of growth towards more statism. If there was something like that, a second American revolution. You definitely have that possibility. I mean, you hit the reset button and everybody wants to build some kind of structure. Oh, I shouldn't right. say everybody, because obviously some people, do, some people are <laughs> fine just doing things their way. I think that's right. actually too, why I haven't seen a lot of discussion with people I know here in Idaho about this topic is, that, oddly enough, shortly after Michael sent me an email asking about this today, I saw this topic come up in some Idaho Liberty related Facebook mm -hmm. groups. It's like, huh, that's kind of strange timing. But <laughs> the answer that most people, a couple of people answered said, yeah, I heard them. And that was about all they had to say. So it was one of these, what do you want to okay. know, really? And right. People right. just kind of, they know about it, but, but it's about, is Free State Wyoming still alive? Well, yeah, but they just want to do their thing and be left alone. Yeah, yeah. Which yeah. I mean, more more power to him, and I hope it does kind of work as a proof of concept, um, and that we can have dozens or or hundreds of these one day that are sort of 
private communities that may have some level of autonomy in different flavors too because i mean by by all means if this sort of um patriot constitutionalist thing is your flavor of of liberty then that's great um but it'd be nice to have other ones you know um more ancap more youth oriented libertarian um but it would be great if the citadel could be a proof of concept to show that this can be done and we can be left alone yep Thanks for the call there, Link. You're welcome. Anytime. Thanks, man. Worms. Worms. Gun Training with the Non-Aggression Principle, Volume 1. Basic Handgun and Rifle with Jared Waltz. First rule of being alive is you own yourself. A groundbreaking approach to firearms and self-defense training. Beautifully filmed and easy to understand instructions make this one a must-have. Gun Training with the Non-Aggression Principle, Volume 1. New DVD from Michael W. Dean. Available on Amazon. Your house is your property. Back on Freedom Fiends Live, the Freedom Fiends Live call-in show. Uh, I'm not going to give out the number, though. We, we had our one call for yeah, the day. So. I'm turning that off. You know, it's interesting that someone off. sent us the Citadel and said, Lip pair or Waco 2 wouldn't it be Ruby Ridge 2 Ruby Ridge was in Idaho was in Idaho yeah, yeah. you know Although that's one Ruby Ridge was one person's private land and private residence the Citadel would be multi-family uh, living like, you know, Ruby, like Waco was Ruby Ridge is what turned families. Ruby Ridge is what turned our black friend from Idaho into a gun guy constitutionalist you know kind of person uh he was like 10 and it was you know 100 miles from where he lived and he was appalled by what the federal government was doing mm. to those people mm. how can you how can you not be i mean especially if you lived there and got to hear the people in the community's reaction to it instead of just some blonde hairdo on cnn's reaction to it i know i mean how could you how could you not realize who the bad guys were and be deathly afraid of the government goons coming because to, kill, to shoot your mom in the head. Yeah, you know? I think, I mean, but think about how, like, how the press played that and even more so Waco. I mean, like, Waco, they made up lies and said they were racist and child molesters. And, you know, the child mm. molesters was a lie. And the racist was, uh, you know, they didn't point out the fact that a third of the people, they were black. Uh, mm. They were not racist. They were we'll take anybody into the kingdom of heaven kind of people. And, yeah. you know, basically it's like the, the, the press, the, the media, the TVs made them look like lunatics because they defended their own property when they were aggressed on by an outside force. Yeah. Which is just awful. And I don't know, I guess it's just indoctrination, you know, and who was it? Um, Ah, yeah. Um, Stefan Molyneux the other day was talking and he was like, well, you know, you can convert, you know, what are you going to do? Convert libertarians at the rate of three a year or something like that. Uh, you just can't keep yes. up with the millions. Even if you do, you can't keep up with the millions of students who graduate from 12 years of government indoctrination every year. Uh, the schools are just churning out these uber statists. Uh, you know, like Dude, you're, it's a you're bumming ground me beef out. factory. You're bumming me out. <laughs> I mean, I say stuff like that to you, and then you I, and worry about it. Maybe not as specific as that, but I've said things like that to you recently on the show and off the show, and your response is kind of like, "No, man, I think that truth wins in the end." No, I still think truth wins. I just say that uh, you know you have to recognize what where the root of the problems are and yeah. where the most heinous uh where, where where what you really have to compete with and that's what we have to compete with well we're converting we're converting more than three people a year we're converting at least three people a week and that's going to yeah. go up to 300 people a week when we get on radio <laughs> next month Right, right, right. Um, or like Ben Stone says, you know, find. It's not about converting people always. It's about finding the people who uh, know in their hearts that politics is ridiculous, so they don't even pay attention to it. They don't give a, a hoot one way or the other. They're probably libertarian, you know, in their hearts because they don't believe the state holds a high place of esteem in their lives. So they're sort of the the agnostics that we can bring into our political atheism, so to speak. DJ, what do you think about Waco? Waco was whack. And, and, <laughs> yeah, there you go. DJ just came home from... She worked today. Isn't that horrible? 
no. Is it horrible? Didn't, oh. didn't you work I love today? You, baby. I'll be with you shortly. I'm talking to the fiends. So uh, there's a comment in the chat room. Mark said, Waco, at the time I said, go get him. And I'm absolutely ashamed really? to say that now. Um, at I least you're brave enough to say it, though. I know. That, that's I know. very honest of you. And that's very good to recognize your past sins yeah. and sort of confess them, I guess. I didn't quite say go get them, but I was kind of believing, well, the TV says they were bad people, so something must be done. You know, it, yeah. it, what it kind of was to me, I didn't really analyze it enough to say go get them because i didn't really care about that was when i was in a hot rock and roll band i remember i watched waco on tv in oklahoma uh at the drummer from the flaming lips house and um you know we were kind of watching it like we were watching a soap opera it, it wasn't so much judgment it was kind of like wow pop open a beer and open those chips man let's watch this this mm -hmm. is bizarre um yeah yeah but it was kind of more I think I think my response was more, well, they must be bad people if the government had to go to those extremes. Mm, they must be yeah. extreme people if our government had to do something that extreme. Because back then I had kind of an ill-formed view of just like, well, law enforcement is to protect people, you know? Right. Well, I mean, one of the apologists for Obama who was on the left and always very anti-war during the Bush years – I think he was a writer for Mother Jones, and I forget his name now. But um, that was sort of his argument for why liberals should still support Obama was, well, we trust him. He's our dear leader. So even though it might seem like it's bad to us on the surface, there's got to be a reason he's doing it. So we have to support him. You know, people sort of like that, that whole, say we, we, we're tiny and insignificant and the yeah. government is powerful. So we must defer to that. People like that say to people like us, well, what's your solution? And I don't really have a solution, but I don't have to. I'm not, as you say, the libertarian central planner. Uh, you know, I'm not drawing up the the walled city that right. we're going to live in and saying how it's going to work, and other people can do that. But I think it's enough to just be saying what's happening ain't working. Right, right. Which is well, something I mean, most to, people to, can get behind. I mean, look at how the flu has a better rating than Congress. Well, to me, the solution is simple. The solution is first you you got to define the problem. You say, hey, is some is this person's action hurting me or my family or any of my property? If you can do like one of those charts, if the answer is no, then the arrow points to do nothing. <laughs> if the answer is yes, it points to defend yourself, your property or your family. I mean, those are the two solutions. Yeah. Right? I mean, I always like that. There's a saying in uh, Al-Anon. Al-Anon is like. AA for non-alcoholics who are in love with alcoholics, basically. It's basically a 12-step <laughs> organization on how to leave your husband if he's a drunk. Although mm. a lot of it gets perverted to where it's like, don't leave your husband, stay and support him. Don't buy him alcohol, but you know, stay married to him. And I would, I would say to anybody who's dealing with a drunken sot of a husband who's not seeking uh, any kind of recovery and it's just making your life hell, I'd say leave him. But right. uh, well, I would say to the people in my life who are dealing with alcoholic husbands, please don't leave me. Wait, are you an alcoholic husband? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> it was a joke. Yeah. Oh, I mean, okay. You're I not though. I don't. Are you? No, I'm not. I'm not. I was self denigrating. Ah. It was supposed to be for comedic effect. Yeah, it's like I don't know. My whole experience with with alcohol and addiction is kind of like that's not funny. You know, that's my response to that. Uh, but, yeah, good you know, point. Kind of like how many lesbians does it take to change light bulb? None. That or one, and that's not funny. But. Uh, <laughs> I forgot about that one. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, one. but okay. there's a thing in Al-Anon that I really like. It, I don't even think it's in the book. It's just something people say in meetings, and it's uh, don't just do something, stand there, which is <laughs> which is a response to how people involved in codependent, horrible, effed up relationships with alcoholics often feel they have to do something constantly. They have to, you know, mm. lie for him when he's sick. You know, mm. they call and say he's sick when he's actually drunk to his boss, things like that. They're always having to do something. And in Al-Anon, they, they tell you to, uh, to dis, di, disassociate, di, detach with love, which basically means get the hell out, still love the person from afar, don't judge them, but you can't help them. And mm -hmm. I really think don't just do something stand there is kind of good advice with politics yeah. you know it's yeah. you don't have to do anything uh and you know apologists for the state would say well 
you know, you're not doing anything. You're just complaining. And I'm like, hey, that's more than you're doing because you're participating in something immoral. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Doing being neutral is much better than being an aggressor. I mean, look at Switzerland. They've uh, stayed yeah. out of all major wars. And, you know, really, they're the only country left besides America where people have their guns. I mean, to the extent that they do in America. To the extent that they do. Although, um, you know, India's had a big shakeup because of this horrible gang rape, rape that happened recently. Yeah. And, and apparently that's, you know, it's not just this one rape. There's like uh, a trend of lots of rapes. And um, I read an article from an Indian newspaper where it's an editorial basically saying, you know, women are, are applying for more guns. We need to let them have guns. You know, let them have more guns. Accept these applications. Let don't just deny them. them. Let them. That is so scary. Well, in it's the state, the right direction. it's better than not. I right. like Wyoming exactly. where they're going to jail you if you try to not let us have guns. <laughs> All right, we'll be back. Love the fiends and want to help out? We do take donations and we put them back into our Liberty Projects. You can make a donation by clicking on the spinning coin on any post. But what if you want to help but you ain't got no cash? Or you made a donation and you want to help more? Here's how you can help. Download and seed our torrents to help keep us drone proof. There's a torrent club link at the top of freedomfiends.com. You can also blog the fiends and share episode links on Facebook, Twitter, and elsewhere. You can rate and review our movies on Amazon on an IMDb, you can rate and review the Freedom Fiends and Anarchy Gumbo and our songs on iTunes. That really helps a lot. You can buy our movies and share them with friends or give them out as gifts. And one of the best ways to spread liberty is to buy a bunch of Freedom Fiends buttons and give them out as gifts. Wholesale prices are available and you can also comment on our site or better yet, comment about us on other sites. And please email the site link to all your friends. Thanks for helping spread the Fiends message worldwide to as many Liberty people as you can, especially to those who don't yet get it. You rock. Yeah. Did you press the Yo Homo button? Freedom Fiends with me, and Michael Yeah. Will this infernal show never be over? Ah, it will be. Indeed. Very soon. In that's like real, 10 that's, minutes. That's man. not good radio saying, God, I wish this show would be over. I don't really, no, I don't really believe all. that at all. I yeah. would like to go on forever. Yeah, our, our last segment's short, man. It's like 10 minutes 12, long. 12 seconds. <laughs> yeah. So, hey, when we're on radio, are we going to still cuss but beep ourselves? I think no. that's the way to go. No, no, it is not. But if we accidentally cuss, you will have to beep us. It's not going to be live, and we are not going to cuss. And if we cuss, I'm going to edit it out. Mm. I'm serious about this, man. Radio is a whole new world, uh, and they're serious about it too. And no one's going to want to take us if we're beeping stuff. It ain't going to work. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Right. Yep. No. We uh, well, it works we do for South Park. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> they have lawyers. Uh, that, we don't. That, that's TV. Yeah. They they can hire a legal team. Yeah. Yeah. No, we're going to be cleaned up, man. We're never going to say the word anarchy, and we're never going to say the word beep. Mm, mm. I look pretty Jewish in some of these uh, these photos. For those who don't know what the photo thing we've been talking about this whole time is, is for our radio promo, we're doing photos. And I went to, uh, I have a brother who, or a brother-in-law. You went to a lot of effort. I did, I did. I have a brother-in-law. Okay. He, he's, he's got a decent camera. He it's the SLR camera with the lens, and uh, digital? he works at the. Is it a the digital digital yes. one that looks like a thirty-five millimeter film one? And exactly. has the same optics. Those are good. Yeah. 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 Um, and he works at the Art Institute. He also goes to school there, but he works running the gear cage, which is <laughs> it's a good person to have on your side. So the we went there. Cage. We're, we're going to go do it at the video recording studio and shoot it in front of the green screen. But that was booked. So we uh, we shot it in the photography studio with I don't know, the results are OK. The colors kind of off in some of them. Focus is kind of off in some of them, but we took like 150. So I'm calling it down, and Michael's like, "Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it." Because he's well, impatient. I wanted it. I wanted it last night. Because I'm what? Because you're impatient. <laughs> I'm not impatient. I'm proactive. Uh, My impatience okay. is what got us on radio. That's true. That's true. I didn't say it was a bad thing. I didn't yeah. say your impatience is a bad thing. Yeah, pa- patience can be a bad thing if you have too much of it. Patience could be a good, bad thing, a good, bad thing. Patience could be a bad thing if, uh, if it leads to inaction, you know, it's kind of with, uh, with getting our stuff out in the world 
And yes, we're going to be on terrestrial radio to answer uh, Prairie Dog, South Dakota. Um, uh, I would say it's the opposite of don't just stand there. Don't just do something. Stand there. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. So let me count how many picks we have for. Yeah, we're we're gonna be uh we're gonna, we're gonna be kind of like Free Talk Live. They are on radio. Yeah, Michael's childhood dream, as Mango said. Literally, that's all I ever wanted to do was be on radio. You know, I took a few detours of wanting to be a railroad engineer, a scientist, and a rock star. And uh, I didn't do much with railroad engineer. I didn't do anything with scientist except learn a bunch of useless facts. And uh, I sort of made a stab at being a rock star and got signed to a major label and toured America and Europe and uh, the band broke up. But uh, no, this is going to be it. This is it. This is what I'm meant to do, man, is be on radio yeah. with my friend Nima V. Yeah. And Although, um, being a live musician, man, I kind of envy oh, you. I, you want- I did a live performance uh, a couple <laughs> nights ago, and I forgot how much fun it was. Like Before I moved off to Wyoming to be a reporter, I actually had a regular – it wasn't my show, but I participated in a show. I'd have like a two or three songs, and I'd be a hype man for another rapper. But that was like every Thursday on 6th Street, and it was amazing. And I hadn't done anything like that in four years, but the other night I went and DJed for a rapper, and it was, it was a real fun setup. It was kind of sketchy at first. like The dude was kind of flaky, didn't – showed up like 30 minutes late. We were playing at a different time than I was told. Um, we were playing on a different stage than what I was told. But once we got rocking, it was so much fun. And it was me as a DJ, another dude with Ableton Live and a sample pad, like an actual drummer for a hip-hop act, which is always fun. A and German drummer. German drummer, yeah. It was, it was really cool and weird. It was like they had just drove in from Tennessee like in this car. I don't know how they fit three people in it at all because it was full of like – uh, music gear. I guess the drummer like slept in the back. I wanted to ask him like, where do you keep your drummer? Is he like on the roof in a bag or what? <laughs> He's in an anvil road case. And, and he, was, he was like, it was very nice to be playing with you. Or how, I can't do a German accent. I want to make concert with you. <laughs> yes, yes. It was, uh, and and it was. You know, it's kind of tense because I had never worked with the dudes before, but uh, it went off pretty well and people liked it. And then at the end, I got to do uh, I Own Me live for the first time. Um, so I wrapped eye on me and, and the crowd was really feeling it. It was dope. People were like bouncing up and down and like singing along to eye on me. It was, it was so much fun. And I just felt like, ah, I remember this. I remember but what I've been missing. It was also a lot of hassle. And that's what I remember as well as the fun. You, you yeah, told me, me about the hassle was so worth it. I was you like, told me about ah. waiting to go on and I was like, that's all the reasons I quit being in a band and you're like, yeah, yeah. because I was, I was supposed to work that night and I got somebody to cover the early part of my shift. And I was like, I'll be in as soon as this show's over. And then they pushed like our set back like two hours from when I thought it was going to be. And, and they wanted us to go on last. And I was like, I got to go to work. You got to let us go on, you know, like third or second or something. And they finally did. But you know, I, at the end, I was just like, you know, I stayed here this long. It's been so much of a hassle. I got to get on stage. I got to get that feeling of people looking at me and being like, oh. So, yeah, and it was dope. You know, afterwards, people were like, wow, you should definitely rap more. You know, fuck DJing. And I was like, yeah, that's awesome. Feels good to hear that. Yeah. Well, you know, and they were kind of surprised because they thought you were just the DJ and then you got up and rapped and were better than everyone else. And <laughs> But that's kind of what you and I do. I, it's like, you know, we're, we're not uh, – I'm not really a film editor, but I do a lot of it to do what we do. I'm, I, di- I didn't say when I grew up, I want to be, you know, working in Photoshop, combining photos, but that's part of what we're going to do today. So, you know, you, you have to wear all the hats at once to really make it in this world, I think. Yeah. These days. And that's one of the reasons, that's one of the things you and I have most in common is we want to do something. So we learn all the different trades around it too, so that we can do it ourselves. You know, I have a friend who's always like, he wants to be this big time TV, you know, film producer. And all he's doing is trying to network and talk to people who can do every, every little piece of it really well and really good and, and get the right setting and get the right camera crew and get the right lighting dude and get the right sound dude. And he spends all his time doing that that he never really produces anything and then somebody doesn't show up or somebody flakes out and he's depressed because the whole project's ruined that was like, my just experience do the, just do the shit yourself man just do that, the shit that yourself. was my if it's ob- not perfect at least it's done my observation in hollywood uh you know i was i lived there for five years i lived in la for five years and uh a lot of people that i talked to when I got there, the whole time I was there, everyone was like, well, my script is being pitched to these studios and blah, blah, blah. And like at the end of those five years, 
all those people who specialized and tried to do one thing and tried to break into Hollywood in the big way, literally by the end of my five years there, 95% of them had gone back to Ohio with their tail between their legs. And I had directed a movie that was narrated by Robert Downey Jr. You know, and Mm -hmm. that movie didn't become big in the theaters like they were trying to hope to do. But I actually finished a film that had a bunch of Hollywood people in it. And it's a really good film. And I did that by like not going to the parties, not networking, just Mm -hmm. sitting in my bedroom and and working, you know, and doing it. a a story I like to tell about how I was not into the networking thing was um, we got Jared Leto to be in the movie in the documentary about Selby because Mm -hmm. he worked with Selby in Requiem for a Dream. And Um, They finally agreed to do it. His publicist called me and said, well, okay, he's doing a junket today for this other movie. We can either, you can fax me the questions and we will film him and send you the tape, or you can make an appointment and try to do it yourself and find time to do it. And I'm like, all of those people who went back to, to Ohio would have said, oh, I need to meet him in person. I want to do it in person. And I was like, oh, wait, you want to do my job for me? I'll fax you the questions <laughs> right now. So I never met Jared Leto. He's in my movie. He's great in the movie. And I had no need to meet him because all I wanted was zeros and ones on a hard drive, which is yes. all, all I'm about, which is why I'm pushing you today to get me these pictures because I yes. want zeros and ones on a hard drive that I need. And I wanted them last night. But uh, I don't care about meeting Jared Leto. I want the zeros and ones of the tape of him talking and answering my questions. And that was my whole attitude towards media production, which was why I was able to actually make a movie in Hollywood with Hollywood people that got distribution. And all the Mm -hmm. people who were trying to like beg Hollywood for permission to do something in Hollywood gave up and went back to wherever they came from. Yep. It's like Jay Z says, far from a Harvard student and just had the balls to do it, you know. And that's uh, what he did. He just went out and started his own company. He's like nobody would sign him. He was working with uh, I think a dude named Big Jazz and they went and did this like st- studio shoot in like France and and the the record flopped and then the the record company didn't care about them anymore and wouldn't wouldn't help them out with anything. And he was like, "Fuck that. I'll just I'll just meet my own people and do my own thing. I'll I'll go in the studio myself, produce it myself, put it out myself." And look where it, it got him. I'm not saying we're going to be Rockefeller one day, but I'm just saying I'd rather do the shit myself and wait for somebody like, else to give it's me a It's like the, the Clash said, we put up some blankets so the microphones would understand. <laughs> All right, man. It's been a great show. Yeah, man. Definitely. Have a good I, one. I love rocking the world with you. Oh, yeah. Worms. <laughs> <laughs>